Now I'd like to turn to a an emerging uh, concept of, uh, at least in the veterinary medicine, that's emerging of using basal uh, insulin supplemented by bolus administration of uh, insulin products. And this approach was popularized for more tight control of human diabetics and all of the secondary sequela of diabetes in humans and the longer duration of the diabetes in those patients, uh, things like eye disease, nerve disease, et cetera, were certainly a driving factor for more uh, tight control. This was taken from a paper that I'd recommend you take a look at um, that suggested this concept could be applied to veterinary patients. And before doing that, uh, they made a note, and there's really no data that I saw that they presented here, but uh, it is useful to note that the, the boluses around meals of insulin, if you look at the, the concentration of insulin going up in response to a meal, seems to be much shorter in a human than it is in dogs or cats, particularly cats. And yet the amount it goes up on a bolus is about the same from human to dog and slightly and much less in the cat. So the cat doesn't seem to quite fit the bolus, uh, basal bolus concept uh, as well as maybe a dog does. So what's this idea? The idea is that the pancreas, when it's not presented with uh, calories to uh, in the GI tract, um, it basically is producing a basal amount of insulin. And that is mimicked by this line, this green line right here. And that as you take in uh, glucose and, uh, or I should say carbohydrates and food, and it gets broken down and it's absorbed and your liver sees it and your pancreas sees it, basically this generates a bolus of, of insulin that helps to drive down the postprandial glucose that's been generated. Um, postprandial glucose um, is not really as big an issue, um, e harder to d actually identify in dogs and cats when you follow them with in uh, glucose measurements throughout the day um, as it is in a human. But the idea is that as you, each meal, you get a, a short to intermediate acting insulin. So um, they basically have shown that, and in, in comparison to these short-acting insulins on top of a longer-acting insulin, what we're tending to do with intermediate-acting insulin is something like this in the black. So you can see if, an, if you feed them once a day, they're, they're basically there's a, the body is saying, I, sh I need a lot of insulin here, but it's maybe delayed. And so you'll get some hyper, hyperglycemia as a result that you wouldn't expect. Uh, and if you repeat it, of course, then you're giving another one here. Uh, and so tends the, in, in animals will give intermediate acting insulin twice a day. That overlap occurs, but it's not perfect with regards to um, managing the postprandial uh, increase in glucose. So this led. Uh, some researchers to take a look at some of the newer products um, that are longer acting and actually not only in terms of the way they're formulated, but also um, the concentration. Uh, the typical concentration of an insulin glargine was 100 units per mil, but one became available for human medicine that's 300 units per mil. And the concept behind it was that a smaller depot reduced the surface area and led to uh, lower redissolution rate, lower bioavailability, increased daily dose, meaning also a slower absorption. Um, when this was tried with cats and uh, given sub-Q twice a day, a low-carbohydrate diet, monitoring them at home with 16-hour uh, bl blood glucose curves, they noted that um, there was improved or absent polyuria, polydipsy, and polyphagia weight loss and lethargy improved, and there was also uh, improvement of demeanor in all cats, but one or two. Uh, hypoglycemia was reported in 13% of the blood glucose curves. 
So they propose that this particular product, uh, insulin glargine, may be suitable for basal insulin requirements that, that go back to our previous slide. But longer term studies were necessary. Now I'd like to discuss uh, another ultra long acting insulin, insulin degludec or traceba, which has been tried in dogs and cats. And basically what this product is, is that it's insulin, human insulin with a linker and hexadecane dioic acid, a long chain fatty acid to make it uh, more lipid soluble and bind to serum proteins. So this has been studied separately by the same investigator in uh, dogs and cats. And in dogs, uh, where they looked at a glucose clamp, they determined that its duration of action was over 20 hours. But when given alone, it wasn't uh, adequate to prevent the postprandial hyperglycemia. In cats given chronically, uh, at the mean dose was 0.75 international units per kilogram per day, but it varied quite a bit between the cats. Um, it was concluded by this investigator that uh, long-term glycemic control might be achieved in diabetic cats with this product um, and also possibly dogs, uh, and that it also, because of its duration of action, could be a product that would mimic basal insulin secretion if it was to be used in such a protocol. Now, another experimental approach that's been taken to um, extending the action of insulin has been to fuse insulin to a species-specific FC region of an immunoglobulin. And this also tends to allow it to bind to the FC, neonatal FC receptor, which is involved with recycling the insulin molecule. And so it extends its half-life extends its, uh, instead of being internalized and degraded, uh, the insulin hangs around longer. So this was studied in five diabetic cats uh, that were previously on glargine insulin and were switched to this experimental product uh, at a certain dose that was meant to mimic something around 0.3 international units per kilogram, but given um, every seven days. And so, what they found in this study, as you can see on the right, um, that the fructosamine concentrations in the animals were in net, not different, but they some went down, some went up, um, and on average were about the same, and clinical parameters were about the same. So the conclusion was that this, these cats might be managed on once-a-day insulin of this type. Now, turning to the same approach in dogs, um, a fusion protein from canine immunoglobulin was created with uh, insulin, and five dogs were tested. Uh, this study was compared to an intermediate duration insulin that was previously given uh, every 12 hours. Uh, in this study, four out of five dogs showed uh, clinical control with no adverse report, adverse reactions reported. And they felt like there was really no change in the animal status, uh, body weight, fructosamine, or mean interstitial glucose. And on the right, we show here um, the dose of insulin that was used during this period of time and the actual measurement of that insulin. So you can see a steady state and that the animal's average glucose uh, might have dropped a little bit, but there's quite a bit of variability, but at least it did not change significantly relative to the previous control with twice a day uh, intermediate acting insulin. So to summarize the concept that, uh, behind how to mimic basal insulin, uh, the characteristic sought was a duration of action over at least 24 hours and a relatively flat pharmacodynamic profile. Uh, the products that were have been proposed for this possibility include, for both dogs and cats, insulin glargine, uh, particularly the 300 unit per mil insulin degludec, and possibly as a future product, these fusion proteins with the species-specific region of immunoglobulins. So in summary, some of the newer concepts of uh, diabetes are 
not all that new perhaps, but uh, one major goal was is to avoid ketoacidosis and hypoglycemia. That's a pretty broad goal. Uh, to also rec recognize that the availability and practicality issues with these insulins are important to the client uh, and for cost purposes and to not focus on any specific glycemic value when we're talking about targets. Um, the convenience of 20 once a day therapy is certainly recognized for the owners. Um, and in some cases, um, Q12 insulin, PZI, for example, was only shown to have some marginal benefits over Q24 H PZI in dogs uh, in one study. Um, it needs to be given greater recognition to the glycemic limitations of every 12 hour intermediate insulin in dogs and cats. And these advanced concepts um, that are being proposed now, mimicking human medicine, are to try to find insulins that can model baseline as well as to add bolus meal insulin release. These are more complex, these are more difficult and, and expensive for the owner, but these are the more advanced concepts. And it has been proposed that ultra long acting insulin products may serve to mimic the basal insulin uh, that we see in dogs and cats.